I pray that you'll believe that Christ died for you. Collectively, yes, but individually is important because without that, you don't have salvation. He died for you because he loves you. He has a plan and a purpose for you. Amen. And you are worth it to him. We continue with Tuesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. in the Book of Acts. Thursday night prayer service at 7 p.m. And today we are going to prepare what has been purchased for the Beach Terrace, uh, re the residents of Beach Terrace who reside in Long Island, New York. And we have partnered with the, with, um, the workers there, the healthcare workers and administrators in um, coming together as the body of Christ and buying different things that they need and don't have um, and being their sisters and brothers right and their family from afar but not from afar one body one spirit and so um, god calls us to be his hands and feet and so god bless everybody that gave um, and and shopped and every and god bless the hands of all who will help today um, your reward will be is in he is heavenly right yes. amen? amen and so it's also on earth he blesses us on earth as well and so we just thank God for the opportunity to give to um, to give to a good cause, to give to other people, and to be able to give to the right people and not have the money used the wrong way. Amen? Amen. So we're doing that right after service. All hands on deck, please. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> I thank you. You know, I say, when you pray, thank him. Don't, he, he, we don't beg. Right. So I thank you, church, in Jesus' name, for all hands on deck. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> Um, young people service on December 16th at 6 30 p.m. Yeah. Men's fellowship the following day at 6 p.m. And evangelical outreach that same morning on the December 17th at 10 a.m. Then we continue to prepare for our New Year's service. And we already have our next women's fellowship on the bulletin. Yay. So we had our women's fellowship last night and glory to God in the highest for his faithfulness, for his goodness, for his mercy, for his word, for his spirit, for his revelation. And that he is always on time. Yes. I would like to be like God for everything. Always on time, you know? <laughs> Don't delay the deadline, amen? amen? So he never delays the deadline, right? Because he's God. And so for every time, amen, in any Holy Spirit filled true church of God, you are you come you or you go to a place, amen, that's Holy Ghost filled, that believes the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, whether it's a meeting with the women or a meeting with the men, or right what we're here, we're doing right now. God is in the midst and he speaks so powerfully directly to us. It's as if no one else is in the room and it's just him and I. Amen. And he do you know that he does that on purpose? Because he knows you better than you know yourself. Yeah. And he knows exactly what you need and what I need every single time, which is why we should get excited to come on to the house of the Lord and give him praise and thanksgiving because he always gives us a gift every service. Yes. Every time we meet, what is the gift? His presence. Yes. The gift of him speaking directly to us through his word and that he is a promise keeper. So when he says something, he's going to do it. Yes. And so the message last night was on trust. trust. Yes. Amen. Amen. And God is just incredible in the way that he spoke to us and the way that he broke it down to us. And he gave us examples of women in the Bible who didn't trust and how he was so merciful in their lives. And it gives us hope, amen, that when we have trust issues with him, that we're in good company, but we don't stay there. We, 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 we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, amen? amen? So we choose trust. We choose. You choose to trust God. What I said, there's no half step in it. I won't start singing this time. <laughs> But there's no in between. You either trust or you don't. If you're in between, you don't trust. Amen? So hold on to that because we're called to trust God. The only person, he's not even a person, he's God, right? God is the only one who will never fail you or me, will never forsake us, will never abandon us, will never let us down, will never be late, will never ignore us. He's so perfect and wonderful and awesome. He allows us who believe to have this relationship with him. And he's with us all at the same time everywhere we are. He's incredibly supernatural, wonderful, powerful. He's miracle working. He is who he says he is, and he will do that which he says he will do. He has not ever failed all of creation, and he's not about to fail you in your life now. So receive that. Amen. Amen. And we look forward to whatever it is God wants to say and what God um, will say next Women's Fellowship. I'm excited because, ladies, what did we do? We closed out our last Women's Fellowship for this, for this year with what? trust amen that's wonderful yes. right god dealt with us with our trust issues so we yes. move forward without the trust issues with the help of the holy spirit right. yes. so let's remember this right on time we're moving forward in trust amen. 
Amen. Yes. And when we feel like we're wavering, we ask who the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me. I want to trust you, God. I don't want a half step. <laughs> I want to trust you fully. And we're moving on in December 31st. We're moving in. We're already Amen. started moving into a new season, I believe, starting last night. Amen. Amen. And his daughters and, and his sons as well. I know there's something else happening. Amen. And it's good because he's good. God is good and he does good. Amen. We're in the land of the living. Where is that your life? Right. right now. And so we we come expecting, expecting for God to speak because that's what he does. Amen? Amen. See, this ministry wouldn't be here if it wasn't God-centered because we won't ever preach if it's dead here. Amen? Amen? We need his presence. We need his spirit because it's alive. It delivers. It frees. It sets the captives. Hallelujah. It takes us from bondage into freedom. Amen. I can't ever say I left the service and I, and I didn't feel different. I always felt different. Why? Because I went for it. And so we are to continue to draw near to God because he, he's continuing to be faithful to his word and drawing near to us. And he will, you'll never draw near to God, draw near to God. You ever waiting for someone and they don't show up? You draw near to God, he draws near right back in his holiness because that is who he is, our good, faithful, trustworthy father who will never fail us nor forsake us. So we move into, ladies, 2022, 23 in trust. And God only knows what next year is going to be like in a good way. Yeah. Because he's doing a great work in those who want it yes. and go, those who cooperate. And I pray that's all of us. Amen? Amen. All right, now we're going to get ready to take an offering. Amen. Amen. I'll give you an opportunity for sure. Thank you. Amen. Yes. The testimony <laughs> comes from the person. <laughs> Father, we just thank you that you are continue to be Jehovah Jireh, our God who provides for all of our needs in every single part of our lives, Lord God, for our health, for our well-being, for our finances, for our family, for our workplaces, for school, for all of it, God. Thank you that you are a provider, Jehovah Jireh, our God who provides. And we thank you that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever imagine so that whatever we face this morning, you're still God. And may no one in this place so that can hear my voice limit you in what you can do, Lord God. You're God of the impossible. So we cover this offering with the blood of the Lamb. We thank you for being, Lord God, our provider for our jobs. You've given us those jobs. Our, our money, you've given us that money. Our homes, our vehicles, whatever we have, it's all come from you because the enemy will not bless us that way consistently. Hallelujah. But you, God, are good and you do good. Hallelujah. You are trustworthy. And so we just cover this, this offering with the blood of the Lamb. And we thank you for continuing to make a way, Lord, for this ministry, your ministry, not ours, Lord God, and to bless those who give. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you would like to give, you could do so through Zell. Uh, at Walking with Christ. And the telephone number is on the website. And someone is asked to share. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Last night um it was the women's fellowship. And um it was a it was a big great word, like the trust, because you know, the during the week I was constantly you know, everything kind of went wrong. It was like one thing after another. I lost my wallet, my flat tire, this, that, another thing. You guys have all the things that we go through. And I kept saying, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Just trying to convince myself almost. And um, I did believe it, but kept saying it, and it felt like didn't really, there was no depth to it. And then I came, and I heard the word, and it, it moved my heart so much. And I was praising him and worshiping him, and I really, really was like expecting something beautiful. I knew it. He already let me know that something was going to happen, and that something always happens when we come to when we come expecting, because he always shows up. But it was even more amazing and wonderful. And a big problem that I had since the beginning of my walk with Christ is sometimes I stop right when it's like right when it's about to happen, or right when something great he's going to do, I stop, and I don't know why. But yesterday I didn't. I didn't allow that. I wanted him so bad, I was so desperate. And as I was being prayed for, he spoke to me so clearly and he showed up so mightily and he he took away this pain that I had in my heart that I didn't even know I had because it's just like, sometimes we surrender things and let things go and go and, and, and allow him to move. But sometimes we go back to our old ways when we hold things in or don't even realize there's roots in us. Like one time we have learned about roots. There's roots that need to be pulled. 
and and he pulled every single root. He didn't let me have one thing left. Yeah. Because he said, you have to be filled with me. There's fills with things in there that you got to go. And I wanted it. I said, Lord, I, I was raw. <laughs> I didn't care who was in the room. I don't know what you guys heard, but Jesus, no. there's no shame. I was so unashamed. I just Amen. didn't care because I saw, I, I saw him standing right before me. It wasn't the person who was praying for me. It was him holding my hand saying, I want to hear. I want to take away your pain, and you have to give it to me. I had to deliberately tell him, deliberately let it go, deliberately just be completely honest. His integrity, his honesty, the way that he is with us, I had to be with him in that moment. And I said, I'm doing it because I I, want, I jumped off the cliff because I know that he was going to be down there holding me. And the one amazing thing, because he's so incredible, is I constantly feel like I can't breathe because I'm so overwhelmed with my life or whatever it is going on. And I, I tell him like, oh, I can't breathe, Lord. I can't breathe. I'm always telling him that. And the sister, who, when she was praying for me, I passed it in when she was praying for me. She kept saying, breathe him in. Breathe him in. Breathe out whatever it is in them. Breathe him in. Breathe him in. Breathe him in. She kept saying to me, for me to breathe. And so I was praying, we're praying, and I'm like, you know, I always tell him I can't breathe. <laughs> she was like, oh, let me breathe. <laughs> Because it's like, yeah. that's that power that he has, that only he knows. And he, he shows up and he's like, come on. He showed me such love. He was deliberate. He was one-on-one. -on -one, and that's what he is to each and every one of us. And we have to go for it. We have to be deliberate with him as well. We have to desire him with that same desire that he has for us, if not more, because he's God and what he did for us on the cross and what we remember this day. And I'm excited. And I'm excited to keep going because this is just like another little step towards, yeah. you know. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. I will um, give an opportunity if anybody else would like to share about yesterday. <laughs> God bless everybody. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Just bow our heads and we pray. <clears throat> Father, we just come before your very presence this morning, Lord God. Lord, we humble ourselves before you, Lord God. Knowing that you are a good God. Lord, we ask you to speak this morning to our hearts and our minds, Lord God, as your word comes forward, Lord God. Lord, we rebuke the enemy, Father God, in anything that might hinder us from hearing your word this morning, Lord God. As we know that your word is life, your word is truth, Lord God. So we thank you for speaking, Lord God. And I ask for your help this morning, Father God, so that the word can come out, Father God. Like a double edged sword, Lord God, coming to the bone and the marrow, Lord God. I need you, my Savior. I need you, my Lord. And I ask for your grace, Father God, as this word is being preached. Let it come out exactly as you say it, Lord God. Not adding or taking away anything, Lord God. But speaking your word, Father God. For your people need you, Lord God. I ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's open up our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 10. Let me do this, say amen. New Testament, John, chapter 10. And it's a very well-known verse that we are about to read. The scripture is known to everybody. 
John chapter 10. And let's go to verse 14, and we'll read 14 and 15. John 10, 14 and 15. And it says, In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and I am known of mine. As the Father knows me, even so now, I, the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Amen. You may be seated. The title of today's message is, I Know You. And I want you to know something. I want you to know how much God loves you. All the time we say it and we preach it. But I want, really want you to know that, that God really, truly loves you. And I know it's hard for some people to accept, but he does. He is the good shepherd. Amen? Amen. And Jesus spoke this in John chapter 10. In fact, throughout John chapter 10, he keeps repeating that he is the good shepherd. He makes a point, he makes an analogy to, to say his beginning in verse 10. And Jesus says this to let the leaders know that his way of thinking and their way of thinking are different. That the religious leaders of that time were hypocrites and served themselves only. And oftentimes they betrayed Israel. And I said because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Many times they were just in it for themselves. And they would use the sheep, they would use the, the, the people of God to their advantage to, to, to get what they wanted. And when they got what they wanted out of the people, they would just disregard them. And Jesus knew this and he rebuked them often. He made a point to tell them that he was the good shepherd. He knew what was right for the flock. Amen? Why? Because he knew them. He knew his people. Do you know in ancient times, shepherds spent a considerable time with the flock? From the moment the lamb is born, the shepherds would interact with it. They would take care of it. They would feed it. They would carry it. They would nurture it. And the flock, right, the sheep, would get so used to the shepherd that the only thing the shepherd had to do was speak and the sheep would recognize and follow. Mm -hmm. That's why you often see them with a staff and walking. You're like, how is it that all those sheep are following that one guy? Mm -hmm. It's because he spent time with them. He nurtured them. Mm -hmm. See, the shepherd loves the little sheep. And when the sheep grows up, it, the shepherd doesn't need to go after it as much. He just needs to walk and he, he'll speak. He'll make a sound and the sheep will follow. Mm -hmm. The sheep will get so accustomed to the shepherd that any other shepherd that tries to call the sheep, the sheep will automatically run away from it. Mm -hmm. Because it only harkens to one voice. How many can say amen? amen? Because there were many shepherds around. And each shepherd had his own little flock. And that flock was loyal to the shepherd. Mm -hmm. And here Jesus says, I am the shepherd. And my sheep know me. And he tells you something interesting and very powerful. And I know them. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. God is a good God. Mm -hmm. He is a good shepherd. Mm -hmm. As a good shepherd... He knows every detail about those that he cares for. How staggering to know that Christ knows you. Amen. He knows me. Mm -hmm. Just as the Father knows Christ, and he says it. What a God. What a Savior. What a Shepherd. Amen? Yeah. 
in love, he willingly lays down his precious life for you and me. What a gracious Savior we have. Then not only did he lead his sheep, but he laid down his life so that they could be saved. Because he knows them so much. He knows every detail about them. Christ was the, the sin sacrifice who would lay down his life to satisfy the wrath of the Father for the sins of the whole world. And so that all who believe in him will be saved. But the life of our God, our good shepherd, was willingly to lay down, not just to stop the wrath of the Father that was coming down, but he laid down because he loves you. So much that he laid down his life. You have to understand how deep is the love of God for you and I. <clears throat> how many are sure and, and, and know without a shadow of a doubt that God loves you? Amen. People say, I know that. But how well do you know that? It is important for you as a believer as a follower of God, of Jesus Christ, do you know that he knows every detail about you? Amen? He laid down his life because he loves the sheep, his church, his body, his bride. That's you. You're his sheep. You're the church. You're the body. You're his bride. Amen. He knows you. That's why the title of the man says, He knows you, right? I know you. And I want you to understand this that He knows everything about you, every detail. If you read the Word of God, which you should be reading, it will be obvious to you as you read the word of God that nothing escapes him. He is omnipresent. He is all-knowing. All-knowing goes beyond him knowing the galaxies and stars and everything. He knows you in such a way better than you would know yourself. And he lays it out in the word of God. He lays it out in the scripture just in case you have any doubt. Because oftentimes we, we question him. We're so quick to question, Lord, are you there? God, are you there? God, do you know? Lord, do you know what's going on? As if he's not omnipresent. As if he's some fool that doesn't know what's going on with his people. He knows what's going on with his sheep. Amen. He knows his sheep. When he said, I know my sheep, it's just not like, oh, he knows me because I mean, I go to church. No, it's that he knows you. How many of you know that? That he knows, I'm talking about a deep, deep knowledge, understanding of who you are. And it is obvious to him because he created you. Amen. When you create something, you know the ins and out. Amen. You are the master, you are the craftsman or the craft woman. You know because you assemble that together. There's not a detail that escapes you. There's not a problem that you cannot solve because you are the architect. Mm -hmm. And do you know that since he is the great architect, he is that cornerstone, he knows how to fix every problem, every situation, everything that can possibly happen to you, he knows how to deal with it. Thank you, Lord. He knows you. In fact, he knows you so well that 1 Corinthians 8.3 says this. But if any man loves God, the same is known of him. So if you say you love God, he knows you. Amen? Amen. But then he goes a little further. He tells you in Hebrews 4.13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto his unto the eyes of him Amen. with whom we have to do. In other words, there's nothing that escapes him. Amen. You are, the word of God tells us that you are naked before him, which goes right back to the way he made Adam. Mm -hmm. 
and was naked in front of him. When the Bible says naked, it's not a perverse thing. It means that everything is exposed to God. And when you come before his presence, there's nothing hidden. Amen. Amen? There's nothing that he doesn't know. It doesn't matter how many leaves you sew together and put it to cover yourself. He sees through that. The Bible says you are naked before him. The Bible tells you that he created all things, and through him all things were created. That's the loving God that created everything, the very oxygen you breathe, the very trees that shelter you from the sun, the very wind that blows that cools you, the very cloud that come and rain upon you, the very sun that warms you, the very earth that moves just right. Two inches to the left, we burn. Two inches to the right, we freeze. But just position, just right. You know why? Because he loves you. Amen. He tells the ocean, don't go that far because you'll kill them. Stay right there. Amen? Amen. He tells the earth that you walk in, the ground you walk on. Don't shift too much because you swallow them up. I have neither of them. That's how concerned he is about your being. This is a loving God. Amen. Amen? He even goes further because you can say, thank you, Lord, that you made the planet for me and the wind and the water and the rain and the animals and this life and great. He goes, but, but I, need, I know everything about you. In fact, Luke 12, 7 says this, but the very, but even the very hair of your head are all numbered. Amen. Fear not, therefore, ye are more value than any sparrow. He Amen. knows the number of hairs that you have. So I mean somewhere in heaven, there's a count when I lose a hair, it goes 1,199 billion <laughs> less. Yeah. Because it's all. Because we lose constantly. Right? Yet, he takes a record. When he says he knows, you, you, we laugh and we giggle. But do you know that you're so important to him? You're so valuable to him that even a string of hair is now a loss to him. He counts that. Amen. You understand that? I said that. People start going. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you think twice about plucking your grays. <laughs> They're valuable to him. He knows you so well that he said that he holds your tears. Yes. Even yes. tears are not a waste yes. to him. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. That's how much he loves you. That's how well he knows he goes like this. I'll count your tears. I'll hold them in a jar for you. Why? I don't know why he would do that. The only thing that comes to my mind is because he loves me so much that anything that comes out of me is not a waste. Hallelujah. That's right. Yes. That's, right. yes. That's how much he loves me. Then my tears are not a waste for him. A string of hair. It's not a waste when he counts it. He, he writes it. He takes the time to write it down and says, he lost one today. He lost a thousand today. He lost a million today. Today he cried tears like a river. And I held each and every one of them. They were precious. I love my son. I love my daughter. I know him. What a wonderful God. He knows you. He knows you very well. How many can say that he knows you very well? Yeah. You think that what you're going through is something new. You think that the hardship, the, the hardship that you feel, that you go through, every every emotion, everything is new to him. It's not new to him. He knows you. The Bible even goes deeper. Psalms 139, 2. And I'm giving you these Bible verses so, so you can know. You can know how much he loves you, how well he knows you. It says this. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understands my thought afar off. He knows when you're going to sit down. He knows when you're going to get up. He understands the thoughts that you even have further on in life. <laughs> Isn't that a guy who, who's very much involved in, in your life? Yet we think that he's never there. Yet we act and we question, Lord, you there? Of 
course he is. Lord, do you understand me? Not only do I understand you now, I understand you 10 years from now. I understand you 20 years from now. I understand you an hour from now. I know that you're going to squish your mind within five minutes of speaking to me. <laughs> he knows that. Do you understand how well he knows you? Do you understand that there's a God in heaven that loves me so much that he knows, he goes, it's time to sit down, Ed. Time to stand up. And there's a record. That's a guy that's very much involved. Yes. See, when, when you love someone, you know every detail about them. I know in, in, in human life, in human form, it drives the individual crazy. <laughs> I know everything about you. Leave me alone. <laughs> but God knows everything. Imagine if he was to expose you how much you really know. It will horrify you. Yes. It will terrify you. You'd be like, I don't know that. But he, you know what the truth is? He knows. <laughs> that's, that's a that's a you know YouTube. There's a little short video, right? That plays out, and it is, it's always like a little song. They send like he knows, doom, doom, he knows, I know he knows, right? It, it, he's like that. He knows. We laugh, we sing. The young people are like, yeah, I understand. That's a, that's a thing like that. He knows you, right? You think you don't know, but he knows. <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this, trust me. We're all laughing. You won't be laughing in a minute. I just want you to know, he knew that she was going to come up and grab my pen. That's, that's how well he knows me, that's how well he knows her. You know, uh, uh, laugh. Because that thunder movement's coming in a minute. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Psalm 94, 11 says this. Again, I'm giving you a lot of scriptures so you can understand that I'm not making this up, but it's written in his words. Psalm 94, 11 says this. The Lord knows the thoughts of men. The day of vanity. Your thoughts are vanity. Why? Because your thoughts are not his thoughts. If you really want to abide in Christ, then your thoughts have to be Christ-like. That's what he says, Amen. renew your mind to the mind of Christ, Christ, not to the mind of men, not to the mind of the world, not to the mind of popular opinion, not to the mind of Democrats or Republicans, but to the mind of Christ. Right? Because apart from that, it is vanity. He knows your thoughts. Jeremiah 12, 3 says this, but thou, although it knows me, that have seen me and tried my heart towards thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. He knows you. He has tried you. He knows your heart. Why do I say that? Why am I saying that? Because the word of God is the same yesterday today and forever. Do you understand that? Do you understand that when he says he knows you, he's not going to change his mind? When he says he loves you, he loves you. How many can say amen? amen. God loves you so much. He died for you. He rose for you. He made a way. He made a door. He calls himself the door. He calls himself the word. He has given everything for you. And that's a beautiful thing. Glory to God in the highest. He knows you so well. that one day he will say that to you face to face. I know you. What a beautiful, beautiful, extraordinary thing is to have God stand in front of you and say, 
I know you. So I'll use myself as an example. One day he will call me. One day the trumpet sound, whether I'm alive or whether I'm not, they're still going to sound. Whether I'm living or dead, I'm still going to hear it. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that should blow someone's mind. Mm -hmm. Just because you're dead doesn't mean you're not going to hear. Yeah. Doesn't mean when you're dead that you have stopped living. It means you're no longer in this world. But the soul is alive. And one day this soul that abides in me are going to hear the trumpet sound. And one day that God that loves me, that cared for me, that gave me manna, that gave me shelter, that gave me life, that knew the numbers of hair, that knew my eye color, he knew every joint that hurts, he knew every pain that I felt, he knew every tear that had fallen from me, he knew everything, every joy, Everything, every feeling, every emotion, he knew everything. One day that God is going to call me front and center. How do I know it? Because Revelation 20 tells me, 12 to 14 says this, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things which were written in these books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which are in it. And the dead and and dead and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And the dead and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now I think I laid down a beautiful foundation. How much God loves you. How much he knows you. How many would say, he knows me. Right? He knows me. He said he knows me. I know my sheep. Right? And my sheep know me. Do you know how scary that is? I'm going to break that down for you now. So you can understand how scary it is. I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. I need to understand that once you pass from this life to the next, the Bible says that everything will be revealed. You're going to know, he knows you in such a way, and you're going to know him in such a way. That's a scary thing to the believer. That's a horrible thing for those who are living. You don't even understand to the depths of what that goes to. That means when you face him, there's no excuse. The books will be open. Yeah. Right? And he's going to say, I know you. And you're going to say, I know you. Yeah. And I know that every word that proceeds out of your mouth is true. And I know that you're the Holy One of Israel. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're the Alpha and the Omega. And I know you're the beginning and the end. And I know there's no sin in you. And I know there's only righteous in you. And I know there's only holiness in you. I know you. I know that you won't go higher than your word. And here is mine. And I know you. To some, he'll say, I know you. I loved you. I know that you loved me. I know that in your trials and tribulation you never gave up. I know that when things got rough, you have faith as small as a monster seed. I know you. You call me by name. I know you. You humbled yourself. I know you. You surrender the all. You were open book to me because the books are open. You're open to me. I know you. Come in. Because I know you. Isn't that beautiful? See, you got scared. That's a beautiful thing. I know you. I know you. Did you serve me in spirit and in truth? I know that you seek me when you didn't want to. I know you. 
Because when I called, you came. I know you because you know me. Come, enter. Come into the fold. Come into everlasting life. Come into my holiness. Come into my righteousness. Come into my love. I know you. I have all those hands you lost, they're here. All the tears you drop, they're here. Come, get rest. Come. I know you. How many would say, oh, I want to hear those words, Pastor. I want to hear those words. What the beautiful thing is to have God. The Bible says his eyes are the fire. His face is like the sun. His face is white. His hair is like, like, like snow. His body shines like it. Have that guy step forward. Lean into you. His radiance is so powerful that it drops you to your feet. You are humble at his feet. He's bending down, touching you so you won't die, but to have life and saying, I know you. Let life once again come in so you can come into my kingdom. Come in because I know you. The downside to that mm. is that he knows you. The downside to that is that when the books are open, this loving God who took the wrath of the Father, who died on Calvary, who gave you whatever amount of years you walked this earth to reconcile yourself with him. He knows you. And that loving God will one day look at you with fire in his eyes, bright as the sun, holding us around, is going to lean forward to you and say, I know you. I know that you thought that one manna a week was good enough for you. What was it that he taught Israel when he got them out of the Captivity and then one manna, he made manna fall from heaven. He said, Gather it today, don't say it for tomorrow, for tomorrow is new. See, he knows you. He knows that in your mind, if you have one good service, you think that was enough to carry you for tomorrow. What happened? What's wrong, church? You getting a little nervous? But he knows your heart. That's the problem. He knows your heart. He knows that your heart is wicked beyond anything you can possibly imagine. He knows that when he had a blessing for you, you deemed it, you thought of it, that it was just sufficient, the one he gave you yesterday, so you try to carry it on for a whole week, not knowing that every day his blessings are new. And every day you're supposed to long for him. And every day you're supposed to come. He knows that you served and you gave to the people and you said, Lord, I love you, but your heart wasn't in it. He knows when you served for righteousness, right? For you, not for him. So your name could be exalted. He knows you. He knows that all you wanted in life is to have your crown, your riches here on earth. See, he will tell you that. I know you. I know you that when I called you, you didn't listen. I know that when I walked, you wandered off. And though I went and got you back, you wandered off. I know that you're rebellious. I know that every time I use my shepherd to correct, to instruct, you got angry, you rebelled, you blasphemed, you spoke bad, you got angry. I know that. I know you. What are you going to say? What are you going to do? I know that when I called you because I had a healing, I had a blessing, you rejected it because you were tired, because you were hurting. And yet, I have healings in my hands for you.
I know that when I call you to fast and pray, you said no. Because you thought you were higher than me. Because you thought you were me. Because you knew better than me. Because you knew the way before I did. I know who you are. I know you. I know you use me for self gain. I know you use me when you were in desperate need only to reject me after I solved the problem for you. I know you thought you were a better father than I am. I know you thought you were a better mother than I could ever be. I know you look for a husband or wife not realizing that I am the ultimate husband and wife. I know you. I know you when you praised and worship, you did it for self-recognition but never giving me the glory and the honor that I deserve. I know that when I said keep my house clean, you made it dirty. I know when I said this is the holy ground, don't touch, you went and touched it. I know that when I asked you to forgive someone, you refused to forgive. And you know who I am. And you know me. And you know what my response is going to be. I know that you try to force my Holy Spirit when it wasn't moving. I know you call a strange spirit because it wasn't my spirit. I know that you call your house holy, but you defiled it. I know you. He even said it once in the New Testament. I'm talking to the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He said, hang on, you. You belong to your father, the devil. I know who you are. You're not mine. But I know you. You know where you are? You're a liar. You're a blasphemer. You're a thief. You're a fornicator. You're a murderer. I know that you hang my commandments in the walk and never hang them in your heart. I know you. I know that you never loved me. I know that you never cared for me. I know that you took every opportunity to crush my little lands, to walk upon them to make yourself great. Instead of loving them, you hurt them. Instead of seeing them through the eyes of love, you saw them through the eyes of hate. I know you. And since I know you, and everything is revealed to you because everything will be the minute you step into judgment, everything is revealed. You cannot deny what is written in the book of remembrance, in the book of, you cannot dispute it, you cannot fight against it. It is no knowledge will be known, knowledge will increase in the heart. You will know that you stand before a sovereign God, before Almighty God. There's nothing you can say, there's nothing you can do before you even open your mouth. He knows, you know. And so it's, it's, it's a standoff. It's who opens their mouth first. And when he speaks, it is done. There's no debating. It's going to be, I know you, you don't belong here. Depart from me. Boom. Out. 
As opposed to those that he says, oh, I know you. You struggled. You failed. But you never gave up. See, that's the difference. As opposed to, depart from me. Why? Because I know you. I know you come into my kingdom and defile it. I know you come into my kingdom and dirty it up. I know you come into my kingdom and try to create sin in it. I know you. I cannot allow that. I will never allow that. You know what I'm going to say. You know what I'm going to do. You know what's coming. You know the punishment in our way. You know this is like a death. You know that. Because now you know that everything that was ever taught to you, everything you ever read is true. You know it now. Now the word is alive in a different way, in such a powerful way that you cannot deny it. And now that word, that word, if you refuse to let in, that word that loved you, that word that pampered you, that word that shield you, that word that covered you, that word that put you on wings of eagles, that word that made you run and, and jump, and he was merciful, and he was loving, he was caring, he was there for you. He loved you when you didn't love him. He showed to you when you didn't deserve shelter. Do you understand that? When you didn't deserve to be saved, he laid down his life for you. When he didn't deserve to get the wrath of the Father, he put his very life on the line, died, took it. Because he loved you, because he knows you. He'll say, I know you. It's a shame you never got to know me while you were living. And now, depart from me. Get away. Pastor, this is, that's kind of rough. First Chronicles 28, 9 says this, Not thou, Solomon, my son, know that God of thy father, know the God of your father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. You should underline that. Serve the Lord with a perfect heart and a willing mind. A perfect heart doesn't mean you do everything right. A perfect heart is that you repent. You repent. Oh my God, repentance is so easy. I know you think it's hard. But repentance is just, Lord, I acknowledge that I messed up. I See, I give up here. I say, Lord, I need you. You know why? Because even my righteousness is a filthy right to him. Even when I do good, it's not... It's not perfect. It's filthy. Why? Because there's always some underlying thing in there. And I need to bring it to him. But because I do that, he goes, I, I know that. I know Edwin. For the religious people, I know Pastor Ed. I know that man. That man got anger issues. He, he got emotional issues. He, he, he has a whole list of things. But you know what that man does? He loves me. He loves me. He gets close to me. He, he looks for me. I know him. I know that when I cry, he cries. I know that when I laugh, he laughs. I know that when I'm angry, he's angry. I know when I forgive him, he forgives. I know him. See, know the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the imagination of thy thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever.
David told his sister Solomon, a man that failed but never stopped loving God. A man that wasn't perfect but never kept, never, never, never forsook, forsake who God was in his life. Always understood who God was, no matter what he went through, no matter how many times he was betrayed, I mean, how many times he was run out of his kingdom? I mean, how many times his kid wanted to kill him? Doesn't matter. His own people did not like him. Doesn't matter. His own failures doesn't matter. He loved God. And God honored him by saying, he has a heart after mine. Because the heart of God is love. But David wants him. But if you forsake him, if you forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Can you imagine? You serving God after all these years in ministry, out of ministry, in church, out of church, coming and going as you please. Because you know, you know, he's merciful and loving. Hey man, the day you see him, and he, oh, your heart rejoices, your heart leaps. There goes my savior, there goes my king, there goes the groom. He comes for his bride. There's a table set before me. Angelic beings are singing all over the place. People are getting crowns. There you are. I need you to picture you there on the line. There you are. There you are. And you're hearing those faithful voices. And the closer you get, it all sounds like music. And you're like, this is beautiful. I made it. I'm in the promised land. I'm in New Jerusalem. I'm walking in. And the line gets closer and more narrow. And more narrow and narrow it gets. And now you're walking. You're looking around. And all of a sudden, those, those singing, it was so beautiful, starts to turn into praising God mixed with cries. And you get closer. And you start seeing him in his glory. And something you start to shake. And all of a sudden, before you even step foot there, you know. You know. It's going to be known to you. And those tears will not be collected. For some, it'll be glorious. See, I want him to know me. He knows everything about me. I want to know him so well that he goes, I know you. My God, you you made him by the skin of your teeth. My God, and you get an okay. And see, I know you people like, oh, I'm gonna get a crowd, I'm gonna be so great, I'm gonna get, and then I'm gonna walk in, they're gonna know me. Don't look at me because I ain't know that's how you think. See, you look at me like, no, not me, because right now you're horrified. But deep down, deep down, he knows that that's what you're thinking. I'm going to walk in there, and my name is going to be plastered on neon lights, and all the angels are going to bow down, and, and I'm so good, and I'm so, what a splendor I am. No. See, I fear the great, that's what I call it, a great horrible day of the Lord. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. I was thinking about that. What does it mean to fall in the hands of a living God? See, to some, it's going to be beautiful. He goes, I know you. Come here. Come here. And those hands that were pierced, and you're going to see right, right through them, and he's going to grab you. To some, the minute he touches you, it's going to be a white gown, glory, and you're going to be so humble. You're going to be like, I don't deserve this crown. I don't deserve this gown. I don't deserve to touch your hand. I don't deserve to work. And he goes, that's right. I know you. I know you don't deserve that. I know you don't deserve nothing. Like this, but I am merciful, and you will see my mercy. Come in, because I know you did your best. I know you gave me your all. I know you love me. We all your heart. We all your mind. We all your soul. I know you. Come, come. 
come, come. And those steps are going to be like little baby steps. And all of a sudden, strength is going to, the minute he tells you, strength will come in. A new body, a new mind, a new heart. Everything will be transformed in you. A new you will be walking in. And you're going to walk in there. And you're going to praise. And you're going to jump. And you're going to glorify his name. And you'll be among the angels. You'll be among the saints. Give him glory and honor and praise. Moving his kingdom. That's a beautiful thing. To some, he's going to touch you. And you're going to say, Lord, no. He goes, no, no. I know you. I know this is what you wanted. Come, come. That's the lake of fire. Come, come, come. Don't drag. Don't fight. Don't fight. Come. He's going to pull you. He's going to pull you. He's going to draw you. That's the image I want you to have. That he knows you that well. You won't be able to fool him. You won't be able to sweet talk him. You can't. There's no sweet talking. There's no belly of the eyes. There's no scripture verse. There's no theology. There's no denomination. There's no membership card that's going to persuade him. He goes, I know, I know you. I know the way I told you to give a tent, you said no. I know the way I told you to give an offering, you said no. I know the way I told you to feed that person, you said no. I know you. Now go, get what you deserve. Go, that's all you long for. That's all you wanted. I got something for you. I got something. It's the last gift I'm going to give you. It's the desires of your heart. And you did not want me. You did not want me. You did not want to know me. Now I don't want to know you. Depart from my presence. And that'll be the last words you ever hear from him. Because the dead in hell don't glorify God. In man, it's also the last words you hear. For some, it will be. For others, it will be, I know you, well done. Well done. Where are you today? In your life. Are you still under the illusion that he doesn't know everything? Are you still believing the lie of the enemy that you can hide from God? Even the devil himself has to give account. Even the devil himself cannot hide from the very presence of God. Even the demons acknowledge when he walks in the room, they bow down. Because they know him. So my question is to you. Is do you know him as much as he knows you? A lot of emotions stirring right now. I need you to take a deep breath. There's a lot of feeling rising up and there's a lot of anger rising up and I need you to breathe. Why are you angry? He wants to know. There's someone in here that why are you angry? When this loving God just opened eternity to you. Why are you angry? When this loving God is still breathing breath into you giving you the best opportunity to come into the fold. He's still speaking. He's still calling, saying, my sheep know me. And they follow. Why are you upset? so angry. He knows you so well that he knew you when you get angry. And yet he offers you forgiveness. That's how well he knows you. 
He also used to give me, he goes, no, no, come on. Come on. My blood covers everything. Come on. Don't be angry. Because it's being recorded that today I offer you salvation. It's being recorded today I offer you forgiveness. Because it's being recorded today I offer you healing. Because it's being recorded today I offer you mercy. Because it's being recorded today I offer you life. Because it's being recorded today I offer you everything. Your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life and in the Book of Remembrance. Because I offer you a crown. Because I offer you a gown. Because I offer you eternity. Why are you angry? My people who are called by my name will humble themselves. And I will hear from heaven. And I will hear the land. That's what the word of God tells you. Humble yourself. Before God. Not before men. Believe me, I don't get no brownie points for people coming up to the altar. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. I just do my job. And then I wash my hands from your blood. Because I have to give account for mine. in my heart and I'll end with this I put this in my heart because I, I, I really feel such an urgency I don't know what 2023 is going to look like I do know this and I know where I'm standing and I know the place I stand is holy ground I know it I know that he's around me. I know this. I know that I know that for 2023, he, he, he's demanding more of me. He demanding such a holiness and a level that I cannot, I cannot even think about. The thought about it sends my body into shock. I don't know what's coming, but I did hear clear this morning the hour is ticking. And I need you ready. And God is calling some. See, he knows so well that he knows that some will hear this message and go. Some will hear it and clean. And he goes, the hour is coming when my sheep know my voice and they will follow me. I can't guarantee what tomorrow will bring, but I do know this that my Lord and Savior is about to open the skies. There's an urgency in me. There's something stirring. The Spirit is stirring. He's stirring. He's calling His people. Not, and not just me. People are feeling it. People, believers are feeling They go on like this. And it's not to say, well, I'm not going to have a future. I'm not going to do nothing. That's ignorance. That's a lie from the enemy. Let him find you working. Let him find you studying. Let him find you getting married. Let him find you raising your family. Let him find you raising your children. Let him find you doing what he called you to do. Because that's not the end of life. But he's coming. And I can't shake it. There's something, the spirit got in me. It, it, it's like an eruption. It, it makes my heart pop into a, a frequency that it, it, it's not known to me. I just, I, 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 I feel like any time my, my, my soul is going to leave my body. Do you understand that? Do you understand that as he draws near, your soul cannot help but to leap out of your body? The closer he comes, the more the spirit God abides in you, the more your soul will want to leave this this sinful body because it knows him. And I feel like life is being pulled sometimes. And it's scary. Because I want to do everything right before him. 
I don't want to face him and, and him to say, you did all this thing, but this one thing. You see, in those that do go to hell, you know the horrible thing about that? You know, like the pain, the suffering. Now, I think the one thing that will kill most, but I can't, I can't be wrong, the one thing that will haunt them in life for eternity is, 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 is this. That they know they deserve it. Now God makes a calling. Stand. I know most of you like I'm saved. I'm saved. <laughs> I'm saved every day. Amen. Every day I need my Savior. This is not one save over save. This is every day I need my Lord and Savior. Every day I tell him, Lord, do not erase my name from the book of life. Lord, please, if it's being erased, put it back on. My name is going to have so many scratches on it because they're going to rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it. It's going to burn through pages. Ed, you used up a whole book. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that in your knowledge and the wisdom, you have a hundred of them set up for me. And God knows I was going to get this wrong the first time around. But thank you that your mercy and your grace is so sufficient. Your mercy, oh, I can't. now I understand your mercy. Now I understand the depths of which you went to for me. See, first and foremost, if you're not saved, receive him as one saving. And if you see him as one saving, it doesn't mean that you say, Lord, come into my heart, I'm good. No, no, Lord, come into my heart. Now, now help me walk this out. Help me, Lord, I need you. Help me get into a good church. Help me get into a good flock that hears your voice and follows you. That I'm not deceived by someone else's voice. Lord, I receive as my Savior. Let me know your voice as well as you know mine. See, I need to know you as well as you know me. You know every hair, every strand. You know my going and coming. You know my ups and downs, where I'm standing, where I'm sitting, my every thought. You know everything. Now help me, Lord, know you that way. So that we can become familiar. So I can abide in you as you abide in me. How many we bold enough to say, I need help, I need more help. I, I need more help. I don't know him the way I should know him. I have an idea, but I don't know him that well. See, you those who raise your hand, if you raise your hand, do me a favor. If you raise your hand, take a step of faith. You wanna know him? Come, come, come. You wanna know him, come. <coughs> Come and, and, and let God touch you. Let God touch you. You know you want to know Him that way. Right there where you are. God bless those. God bless those. God bless those that are listening right now. They are bowing their knees saying, No, no, I need to know Him, brother. See, what I knew yesterday of Him is not enough. See, see, a man is foolish if he thinks he knows everything from God. He's foolish. And his ways are foolish. There are many men that think they know everything. I know everything in the Bible. I know everything I got. Foolish, naive, repent. Because every day he's new, every day he's fresh, every day he reveals. How can you know all the wisdom of someone who's infamous? He, his wisdom goes on forever. There's no end to it. So how can you possibly know everything? And that infinite God, that loving God is saying, come. I want to know you, and I want you to know me, because I know you. I know what you're thinking. I know where your heart is. I know where your true desires are. I know you. I know your anger. I know your betrayal. I know your hurt. I know your worries. Now, I want you to know me as peace. I want you to know me as love. 
I need you to know me as understanding. I need you to know me as wisdom. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. If you're home and you're listening right there where you are, see, we serve a, a God that's all over. He's around us. He's around us. We serve a God that's right there. He's in this place and he's right there. That's how powerful he is. That's how good he knows you. He knows you. He knows every time you're going to hate yourself, every time you're going to hurt yourself, every time you're going to doubt yourself, and he goes like this.